All right, so with the cover off, there's our clutch assembly. Looks a lot like a car one. <laughs> okay, it pulls out of here. Now our pull rod was broke. And I truly believe that the reason the pull rod broke is because what they say is happens is this bearing that's in here, this sealed bearing, yeah. locks up. See, and it doesn't turn. See oh, yeah, that? it's stuck. It's stuck. So then when it's stuck, it broke it. It broke it. It's still in there. Yeah, they are part of it, yeah. There's that. Oh, look how hot it got. Oh, yeah, it got warm. And then it finally snapped. And this bearing is... Yeah, see, it won't turn. Well, we got the fix for that. Yeah, we got a special bearing for this. We got what they call a linear bearing. This is just a regular ball bearing, and it's not made for side thrust. And I bought a side thrust bearing that you press in here. And what it amounts to, the balls sit at, the, at an angle to the rear so that when it pushes on it, the balls are pushing against the race behind instead of trying to raise the balls out of the, out of like a regular, this is like a, like a wheel bearing type. Yeah, not for, just the wrong kind. Not for any sort of thrust. Yep, it's so not a. Th it's really, truly not a thrust bearing. So I mean, with it not being a thrust bearing, that means that when it goes to push on the ball, the side thrust of it can. It da all the time it, it damages it, especially when you have a bearing like this. Especially when you come up to like if 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 this bike, I don't know who owned it, but if they lived in a city, and they did a lot of city driving. And they pulled the clutch in and held it in at all the stoplights all the time. This bearing don't last very long at all. And it just goes, it goes bad real fast. It's just you should me. never sit at a stoplight and just hold the clutch in. You should pop it in neutral and leave the clutch out. Well, and with this kind of a bearing, but with how, this is anybody, kind of a bearing. How, how is anybody supposed to know, I guess, with, yeah. well, over time you learn things, yeah. I guess. There's, there's some... There's some witnessing of a little oil in here. Not a lot, but yeah. we're going to have to pull this apart and see what's left of our clutch. Yeah, I see some residue in here as well. Yep, it shouldn't be wet in there at all, and it is. So There's like some wetness we around this these, hub off. There's some wetness around these heads. I don't know if that means anything, but... Because we're going to take this cover off too. I got a special hub puller for this, but we got to get this nut off first. And uh, so. All right, well, that'll be our next few steps here. So, this clutch assembly here this is a Morgan Beck, and uh, it's factory balanced. So, we're going to, we got to take this apart to be able to change out that bearing. Um, we're going to have to mark this really well just to make sure we can get it back together the same way we took it apart so it's not out of balance by any means. Very important. So looking at this, we're looking for any sort of like balancing marks. And we got these three pins that come through. Uh, there, here, and over here somewhere. Yep, there it is. And, okay, what were you saying about this? This unit, so that the disc is way inside there, you were saying. Yeah, the disc is right there. This oh. is the pressure plate. The diaphragm is that next little piece you see way inside of there. Uh, there's a diaphragm spring right there. Okay, and that's a really powerful spring. That's a real, well, actually, this is the diaphragm. This is a bump. This is the diaphragm spring right here. And this is the pressure plate. This is the body, and this is the cover. Now, when we back all these tabs off, all of these out of here, when we go to take this apart, you can't just back the screws out one at a time. You got to take them a half a turn at a time, all the way around, and keep going around and around and around. And until bring it up it's, evenly. Until, yep, evenly, until it's all the way out. Are loose, and then you can back them all up. Yeah, and that spring is so powerful that if we L don't do that, L yeah, otherwise you you run the risk of, of warping this, and then after that, the clutch won't work right anymore. So, so you'll ruin this if you 
Don't pay attention to that. Yeah, we'll go over all that when we take it apart because we got to get to that uh, that bearing, like we said. But anyway. And we might end up putting a new clutch in it too. Yeah. Since we're in here. Because if this, if this clutch looks even suspect, it's getting replaced. So. Okay. So we got just done hooking the rod back up here so we can hook the brake back up so we can lock the rear wheel and chain so we can back that nut out. Got it in fourth gear. Yep. Fifth gear. Oh, uh, yeah, it's in fifth gear. So get over here in a different spot and we'll hold on onto that and then we'll be able to lock it down. Well, that didn't take much. All right, he's, in, he's installing a special service tool to get that off. So it's threaded. That's got a bolt in the middle, so the bolt pushes on this, and this is threaded inside. And this is the only way you can get this off because you can't get a puller back here. In. Wait a minute, I gotta get the right size wrench. Evidently, I'm not ready. Oh. All right, now there's a, there's a seal surface on this, and there's a seal in here. That's so that that dirt and debris don't come in. It's not so much for, it's it's called an oil, they're called an oil seal. But in this case, the it's, it's got a spring in there, you see it. It's to keep debris from, or water, or anything getting into this clutch. Although, you wouldn't think they'd worry about it with the oil that's inside of this clutch, because it's supposed to be dry. Hmm. And clean, and it's not. We well, got the three screws removed, and then now we're gonna pull that off there. That's a breather off the tank, and this is all this is is a cover. Yep. Going on the sprocket. There we go. Which we wanted to check the sprocket out. See if we need to uh, replace it. Yeah. All right. Well, that's what it looks like. And then we're gonna start working on our assessing our parts here and work on some of these parts we got, like the clutch itself. This is the oil pressure relief valve. Yeah. I mean, there's some grime here from the chain and stuff, but. Kind of rusty. Yeah. You know, actually, the sprocket don't look so bad. Yeah, it's not all cupped and stuff. It's kind of looks like a looks like it's fairly decent sprocket. It's got the right angles on the on each tooth. It looks yeah, like so. it's got flats left on the top, and they're not hooked. Yeah. So they're really it's not a really a bad sprocket. All right. Well, we're getting ready to take the chain off here, and the master link here is on backwards. I started taking it off, but it's backwards. The wheel. <laughs> The wheel and the chain moves this way, and so the open end of the master link is always supposed to be, the open end is supposed to be always away from rotation, so that if it bumps against anything, it don't knock it off, like this would do. So, whoever put this chain on, uh, put it on backwards. No. Yeah. Don't line up. And the link. So here's the clutch assembly, and we gotta clean it up a little bit, like unlike it was before when we took it out. And we got the, the sprocket here, the for the shock absorber. Yeah, the shock absorber assembly. Yep. 
Um, the hub, it shows, it shows some slight markings and stuff, but it doesn't really, my fingernail cannot, cannot find, feel any, anywhere in actually the teeth. I'll know better once I, we're ordering a new clutch for it because this is clearly worn and it is worn bad and you can see this by this see I mean it is like it is war bad yeah so because yeah, these teeth you can see that the teeth are like pointed. the teeth here. are pointed yeah all the way around and they're all squared off on this yeah, and that's good yet so obviously this is harder than this which is good that this is a replaceable part because this is the clutch disc. And so we're going to replace it. And I had already ordered one anyway. It ain't here yet. But I'm also worried. I was worried about this when I first seen this. It, it is worn really bad around here. And it's, and it's got a, it's got about a five to an eight thousandths uh, step where it jumps up. And, what it amounts to is, off the nose of this, this normally sits down on this, like this. And it the nut gets here and it torques it solid. So it's supposed to join solid as like one part, okay? The only thing that could have caused that is that sometime or another this nut come loose during its life. And was run that way for well quite a while because it's it's all I think they call that spalding. It's all it's all war. And if you notice inside when we took this off inside the chain case, there was all kinds of grease and well or oiled and dried, you know, it's dirty. And this was all that same way and it went all the way around this. I, I cleaned it up. But it was really wet through there. So what that tells me is that it was leaking oil down through here, through here, and came out there, and it was getting in here. Um, I don't know if it's enough to make it drip or leak like that, but it was it was slowly oozing out. Um, I know somebody was telling me that you can put an O-ring or an X-ring right in here and that will stop any oil migration around the outside. They have a seal that sits on this that's on the primary. Inner primary case. Inner primary. And there is, and so that stops oil from coming out of this side coming in this direction. But there's nothing, and if you look inside of here, it's all oily. I mean, it is it is wet and it is sticky. You can see it. It's it's got all kinds of oil in there, and so oil has been migrating through there. Now this nut was tight when we took it apart, but <clears throat> at one time it wasn't. So this this X ring will fit right up over here and I'm going to show you this because it fits right in there nice and snug okay and then this slides down and then it sits proud there a little bit see that you see it right there yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay, well, watch. I'm going to squeeze it. It's going to pop right down inside of there. There. Yep. Solid. Squeeze tight. That will never, ever, ever leak oil through there. So then we'll have a seal here. And it's going to have a seal on the inside. And so that when this nut gets on there, it, it can't ever migrate through. So we'll never get any oil through that direction. They should have probably did that from the factory, but they didn't. So... When we put this together, it's going to have an X ring in there. And uh, 
So. Cool. That's pretty neat. All right. Well, um, we're gonna get, we got the parts coming for this. Yeah, we're gonna on. we're gonna take this apart. We're gonna take it apart. You'll probably see that coming up here in this video. It won't be like a a big gap of time, but anyway. Yeah. So we're gonna ready to take it apart here, and we're gonna mark it so we can put it back together the same way. So. Did both sides be just because okay now when we go to put it back together all we got to do is just line up all the all the little peen marks it's just a sharp little punch yeah so like we were saying before earlier we got to make sure that we take these off in in a rotation equally so it can come up together all at once yeah anywhere from a half to one revolution at a time all the way around Otherwise, if we don't, it'll just like it can warp. Yeah, the spring pressure will like bend it and stuff and like mess it up. So we'll work on getting all these tabs bent back. We got new uh, new plates coming as well because well, yeah, you just put new ones on of these kind of things because these can break off easy and we need them all there. So. He's <laughs> trying to get the yeah, full full turn if I can. Yeah. Longer extension would probably help. I got one too. Where do I start? Still one whole rotation all the way around. I'll just keep working at this, but um, this is kind of the procedure. The bolts are kind of somewhat uh, lengthy, so might be a long, a long process here or not. That'll we'll be see. All tight here in a minute. All right. Well, we'll keep it this. Uh, this is where I started, and it's already tight, so. Yep. Let's keep doing this kind of sequence here. There we go. We got that pressure relief off there, and it's, and we're starting to move the plates off. God, it's supposed to be a dry clutch. That's what it's wet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's supposed to be a dry clutch. seconds here we'll be able to pull that top off there Dirty. Yeah. Well, that's. I think. I think what we're looking at is, is clutch debris. Oh, the actual plate itself, like uh, 
the material coming off of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's normal with normal with clutches. Happens like a lot, don't it? Yeah, I think so. Now I want to mark this while I got this here. Because this is where this diaphragm was. So I want to mark that right here. This is a bevel spring. Look at there. That's my mark right there. Did I get my mark right here? Yeah, your mark's over there. It's right here. Over there, the red. Yeah, the red lined up with this one. So when it probably went together from the factory, they did that. Yeah, they did that one over here. Over here. I just picked the wrong one to mark, didn't I? And this is the pressure plate. That fits into three grooves here. And it slides up and down when you pull the clutch. Right, yeah. There's the pressure plate. And there's the clutch. measure this because it's supposed to be like 200 and something. It's actually nice. It's not all. It looks good actually. Yeah. Other than all the debris. It's that's, not all like. Yeah, it's not all gold and scarred. Yeah. That's what I was afraid I was going to see. That's but look was, at it. That's probably what's more important as long as it's not all scratched up. Yeah, it looks nice. I don't even think I have to worry about that. Yeah, there's still some material here, so the ribbons and stuff <clears throat> Not hasn't... Not much, though. It's really... I think it's worn quite badly. Well, it might be, but you can tell that the rivets are still... Oh, yeah, there's... If those rivets would have been exposed, this would be scratched up real bad. So, there we have it so far. Well, we'll be waiting to get our parts in, and we'll be able to put this back together. Here, we just want to measure it quick. Two... Two thirty, two thirty three. Yep, two thirty three. So, and when you look at the clutch here, you can really see how those how those teeth are really worn. Yeah. Really pointed. Oh wow, they're worn. They're over half worn. Wow. We got the clutch sitting up here and we've been messing around with it. This is a different uh, outer plate here we have on here. And we're just testing out some things. We're probably going to use a different clutch entirely, but um, we're going to go into details why we're going to go with a different clutch than this one. And we're going to talk about what we need to do here to make this thing work. So the reason why we have a different outer plate here is right through here on this plate there's a profound uh, a proud step. step here in this material now the clutch we took apart this thing was running loose at one time a long time because this other plate wore it all off wore, yeah wore it all off it's all gone and, and you can kind of see where it was yeah it's kind of sunk a little bit and you can kind of see where it was at but um but it's it's pretty bad shape so uh, we didn't like that so we tried out this different plate we have here and it's better but we have a we have some stuff set up here and we're talking we're going to talk about um what we got going on here first of all you, you take a pull rod and on the underside here i'll just lift it up and on the underside you got to put a large washer around there see i got two washers there and a pull rod and the washers have got to go all the way around that bearing that's in there because you don't want this the pull rod to turn on the bearing okay now this is where we this is where we marked it with the center punch in the three in the four spots yeah, so we saw this way if we take it apart and we move it we to get the best uh, pull then uh, 
that's what that's about. But then you also, if you have to do that, then you, it needs to be rebalanced. But we'll get into that in a little bit. But right now, this is where it's sitting. The only difference between the clutch before and now is this different cover on the top. And so what I got then through there is I got the original nut and I got three thick washers there. And then the original nut that would go on the actuator and then the pull rod nut to lock it. So I locked those and I zeroed it out. So what I mean by that is like, okay, so now it raises up and down. See, it's loose. So we run this back up to zero. Get it where it's going to be. Okay. There. You got to get that thing to where it's going to sit straight. Okay, now it's zero play. Now we're going to try, we're going to try and get these papers to release. What we're doing is lifting the pressure play on the, there's a diaphragm spring inside of here. And when we pull this up, the bearing's pulling the flywheel, that's this piece, this big piece in the center. It's lifting that up and it's collapsing the diaphragm spring, which takes a lot of pressure. And what we want to find is where the papers just all pull out. Now, unfortunately, some of them's going to pull out a little bit before the others because I can tell you right now that this clutch isn't perfect, but because I've done this a couple times already. So here we go. And you can watch the gauge go up. Okay, there is about 23 or 24. See there? I, I can move paper already. Okay. This one doesn't. This one does. This one does. This one does. And yeah, these papers are 6,000. Yeah, six, thousand, yeah, six, said? six thousands. And this one just is moving. It's not quite as loose as the others, but this one's still snug. So we're really close to opening right now. So if we go a little bit more, let's go to 20. Right now we're at about 20, 24. There's 25. But it's still not there. It seems to me it was 27 or 28 that it released on. Not quite. There, it's starting to release. So when it finally releases, even, uh, all of them release. We're past the limit, huh? Yeah, with this here. Yeah, well, 35 is too much. But you got to consider that if if I took all the papers out, it's already loose because you're talking six thousandths ago. So if this is at 30, it's it's releasing at 25 or 24. Okay. See now it's 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 loose here. It's not loose loose. By 32 it will be. Yeah, now it's loose, loose. So we got one tight one right here. The rest of these are like really loose. So. So no way to adjust that. And there's no way to really adjust. Yeah. Well, yeah, there is. You can, and I've done this already, but you can take all these screws out and you can lift it up and you can turn the diaphragm spring in lots of different directions and keep tightening them back up and trying it and I moved it about 360 and about the best I've gotten is between 25 and 28 to like this um, so it's and uh, I'll take the pressure back off Sure, I'm zero. Okay. 
because that can that can that can matter with that. So when we took this apart originally a little while ago, you could, we could tell that somebody had been in here before, and if they replaced this clutch with this one the, for whatever reason. It, it was loose yet or whatever, right? Because that backside is where the splines are at are all like peaked. Yeah, they, uh, the, uh, because we talked about that earlier. The splines on this clutch are all worn. They're about three quarters of the wear it wore off. This thing, it's not supposed to do that. And it's not supposed to do this. So this thing was flopping and wobbling around. So as soon as you pull in the clutch, that thing's just flopping around in there. And it's like. Yeah, we can't have that. So it's, yeah, it's. The other thing is we were talking about was is these are balanced at the factory. And this is where they balance it at on the back yeah, side. These here. are, these are, these are all factory casted little spots. And when they balance these, they take these and they decide where weight needs to be taken off and they'll use these as pilots and they'll they'll drill into these well you know in 1973 and 74 even 75 for sure 75 is even worse um they were really they were really hurting and they they cut a lot of corners just to get bikes out and lots of stuff got forgot and lots of stuff got shortcutted and lots of stuff got missed and i think this clutch got missed because there is no drillings in this at all there's and, no way this is perfect and <laughs> Thor didn't need it when I, and i can take this back apart and the flywheel on the inside's got some more of those divots in it all the way around and none of them are drilled so it tells me that this assembly was never balanced. Now, there is a possibility that sometime in this bike's past that a clutch got destroyed and they bought new components. Now, when you buy new components from Triumph in the day, they would have came like this blank not balanced. They only balanced the complete unit. So you would have had to buy a complete unit to get a balanced unit. Well, they never sold a complete unit. You could buy the discs, you could buy the diaphragm, you could buy a cover, you could buy a base. You, you had to go to Triumph dealership yes. and have it balanced? And you well, no, you just have to take it somewhere that or does somewhere that, can spin that it does and... yeah, put it on a on a balancing thing. And balance them like they balance crankshafts. That's where you take it. Whoever balances crankshafts could balance this, and they would drill it and balance it. And yeah. that's what you were required to probably do. Now, now, did that happen? I have no idea because we bought this bike broken, and yeah. it's and it was not used for a lot of years. And now uh, don't really want to run this clutch because no. our, yeah so and i think this i think this bike vibrated really bad and who knows with this here being more like that that clutch had to be off center and when it spun up that had to vibrate like crazy and, and then that pull rod it's all broke and, and it was broke it took out the bearing yeah and then it took out the pull rod and then they parked it so um, and um so so we got a different clutch we're gonna use so let's go ahead and check that out So here's the clutch we're not going to end up using, but we're going to get into more detail about this other clutch we're going to use. This is a, a full clutch right here that all these parts belong together, but we got to take it apart right we now. We just took it apart. Anyway. It is. It was marked. This is a factory mark. This is a factory mark. See the divot? Yep. Okay. And this is factory balanced. So I'll see the difference here with the balanced. These are actually drilled and these are casted. <clears throat> and the other one was just all holes like that we just talked about. So 
So we know this is this was a balanced clutch. And this may be an earlier clutch, but we can't tell for sure. But nah. that don't matter really. And this clutch disc, it may look a little bit of surface rust and stuff, but it is in really nice shape. And it measures 275 thousandths thick. So it is plenty thick yet. And so um, it is... It is good. So I gotta find. I gotta. Oops, I gotta back up. I gotta find my divot. This one. Okay. I gotta find my mark. There's that one. There's this one. So these these went together like this. Okay. There, like that. That way it is a marked divot to divot. Now, I did not find a divot on this one. So what I did before I took it apart is I marked it right there. I put a mark. I just It's just a pencil mark for now. Sure. That's and all I did. This plate is different than the plate that we put on here, but it still has a nice... It's 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 got a nice ridge here. Got a nice ridge so right we'll, there. This will all went together, so most likely we'll use this all together like it was. I also marked this. I don't. I see a piece of red pa paint. Okay. Um, other than that, I don't really see any punch mark or anything like that. So I marked it also, and it was right here. So what we'll do is. We will put this right back like it was. And this goes. And the only real reason why we even took it apart was just to check the thickness of the clutch disc. Yep. <laughs> That's it. I wanted to see if the clutch was good because we bought this used. And so I, I needed to take it apart to check condition. And uh, so we are also not going to use these plates. We're going we're gonna to get new plates. And I'll clean those up. We need to clean underneath these. But for right now, we're just going to throw it back together and I talk about some more stuff. Ones. Yeah. And we will do this. Okay. We'll get some stuff lined up here. We'll be right back here. All right, so we got six pieces of paper down here, so we can do this test again. Line up the and mark there and the mark there. Yeah, I'm just going to reline up the marks. And then, yeah, there's our line for that top one, the diaphragm. Yeah. Now, these, uh, these shims or these pieces of paper are a certain thickness. That way we can have that... Uh, the, the same amount of, you know what I mean? What, yeah. you what am I trying They're to say? They're all 6,000. <laughs> They're all 6,000, so all the way around. So when we go to lift up, we can tell, like we did before on the other test that we did on the other clutch, we can tell that they're going to be in tight spots or stuff. And we can do back-to-back -back tests. Okay, so then right now I'm just going to run all these screws down. We've got this top cover plate here all cleaned up got the rust off it and we're not gonna put them on yet because we we'll probably have to take it back apart but anyway but for right now we're going to uh just get it ready so we can do our test and stuff and this, see what this this is where my mark is so i'm gonna start here uh, put these all to zero well you know just where it touches the plate yeah. like see how far that turns can't really do half turns when it does that. Yeah. Okay, now we're gonna do half turns. One half. One half. One half. Yeah, so using that T-handle wrench, you're able to tell where your half turn is really easily. It's going to take a while to go all the way around, so we'll come back to this one. Um, we're, we're ready for the next step, so anyway, uh, 
yeah, we'll be right back. All right, so we're ready for our next step. So now he's just put the, the pole rod in there for this next step on testing the testing the diaphragm pole. Right? That's what you want to call yep. it. So we're stacking washers on there so we can get the get the right distance and stuff. Lock that top nut there. Yep. Okay, now this nut here will that's threaded onto this will become the adjuster. This is just gonna hold the the rod will now this rod will not turn when I as I adjust it. I'm gonna set this up here. Alright, we got our dial indicator there. Lined up. And it's on zero. It's zeroed. And you gotta be careful not to hit that. Now we want this to release somewhere around 25 if we can. And there's 23. I already got some loose papers. I got one stuck in it. Kinda stuck. It's not real stuck. It's free. Almost. That's free. That's free. That's twenty six. Again, I want to put it up on here in the center. I want to see if that makes a difference. zero. So let's try this one more time. All the papers are all the papers are getting loose. This one here is a little snugger. And you're feeling for like the resistance and making sure it feels about the same? Well, the clutch would be free. If I pull these out, there's six thousandths play in there. So, you know, that would be loose. So, with this clamp down, it's 25. I think 25 is plenty and it would be free. Okay. And they say that the clutch handle pulling it in you can get up to 35. So you think about 35, you think 30. Well, 
35, 35 then pieces of paper are going to be flopping around. Yeah, 30 is real loose, see? Yeah. So. They're all free, free, free. So it'll release real fine. And uh, so. All right, cool. So that looks like it's good. Get uh, this stuff all off of here and we'll talk about the next part that the uh, reason why we're going to use this clutch possibly. So in a minute here. All right, so earlier when we were working on this clutch, we were talking about the splines and how these are all peaked. And worn. Yeah, they're worn bad. Okay, so the, the book and experts on these clutches all say that you cannot have that kind of free play like you just saw in the background there. The, the book says that they are supposed to go in snug and have minimum uh, free play. This one is hard to get it to even start. I mean, it'll go, but we gotta. Are these, uh, there it goes. These splines have to line up just right. Yeah. I mean, I call that, I call that pretty snug. Yeah. And there is no play can't move it and you try to wiggle it. I mean it, it slides in nice once you get them all lined up. Okay so I would you know very minimal you can hear it a little and this bit. This is like this would be considered good and good to use. Yeah. Now we had uh, we had got a new clutch disc because we just got a new one because we thought this would be too far gone but when we took it apart we found out that it was actually decent. Well actually I bought that before I found and bought this. Okay. I was going to replace this one because this one is junk. Sure. Okay. That makes sense. I think that's, yeah, that's what happened. So anyway, we had got that clutch disc over there. And yeah. so anyway. This clutch disc is supposed to be thicker. And the reason for the thickerness is thickness, extra thickness, is so that when you compress the diaphragm, the flatter you get it, the easier it is at the handle to pull it. So it makes an easier pull clutch. So these are supposed to be 295 thousandths thick. And, and I'll tell you what, it looks like a beautiful clutch. Okay, it's made in England and the whole works. I mean, I ordered it from England. And I put my hub in here. And There's that free play we're not supposed to have. Yeah, it's just like just like my old wore out one it wobbles all over the place and it jiggles and clanks and that's not that's not no good yeah so this is faulty you know I sent a message off to them and telling them of that and uh, we'll see what happens but but when you bought this clutch disc it comes with no I bought these separate Oh, you, you yeah. did? It doesn't yeah. come as a set, but no. you ordered them and then they seal it together. I ordered this real nice clutch pull. When I ordered this clutch, it came with one. And so, actually, I didn't need this one either. So now I got extra parts. But, oh, well, it is what it is. I'm probably going to use this one because this one has Allen in the end to adjust instead of being a straight screwdriver slot. Nothing wrong with the screwdriver slot, other than over time they get all wonky from screwdrivers turning on them. Yeah. Trying to hold it while you tighten this lock nut right here. You know, you're trying to hold the big nut and this nut and the screwdriver, and keep this all from turning, and so this gets all wanged away. Well, with an Allen screw and the Allen wrench in there, it'll be a lot easier. And well, then got a new one of these. Uh... A new one there. I wasn't sure if this was war or not, so it doesn't really look war, but I figured since we were in here and I was ordering anyway, I ordered a new one, and uh, so we're going to put a new one of them in. They won't hurt, yeah. yeah. And on these pull rods, there's a couple different types. There's like a two-piece and a one-piece and yeah, stuff this, you were saying. This one here is a two-piece, and this, piece, this here is part of the pull rod here. And this was this was evidently pressed down onto here or slid down onto here and locked into place. And which is probably fine. This one 
is if you look, is is all one piece. I haven't taken it out of there yet, but it, it's, like it is a, completely all one piece yeah. machined. It almost looks like a valve or something. <laughs> it's, it's very nice. It's nice. Yeah. And we are going to use it, but I'm not going to use this disc. Yeah, we cannot. So we I could, can use this disc, that one that came with this clutch. Now I'm upset I even bought this. Yeah, like we said, we cannot use it like this because um, it'll just wear out quicker because it has free play to move around and wobble and stuff. That, and it'll probably make noise when it's running too, huh? Yeah, when you pull the clutch in, it'll so, clatter. Anyway. And, um, no, I'm not interested in having this at all. But anyway, the clutch... I believe it's ready. We have it ready to go on the bike. Yeah. We're happier with this different clutch because of the difference in the, the balancing for one thing as well. Yeah. So, and see, like, this was the original one we had makes, out of the bike. Makes me think this was never balanced, and that might have caused all of this, possibly. Right. Or, one, they, or they didn't have, or one of the other reasons that, that this can get war is that these can become out of balance and what i mean by out of balance here i'll do it this way <laughs> they can get out of balance because you got you got these you got these six splines so you got you got six opportunities to have what they call clutch run out and so what you have to do, and we're going to do this in a little bit, you got to assemble this, the primaries together, or what you should do is put that in there and bolt this up solid. You put a dial indicator on here and you spin it. And you, what you're looking for is anything, if you can get it under six thousandths, the lower you can get it, the better. And, um, so I've read in places that people have said they had them um, 40 thousandths out. And if they're 40 thousandths out, it causes this wear. Or, you know, hell, it might even cause this at 20 thousandths or 15 thousandths out. And I know when I checked this run out on this clutch, I could get 15 at one spot, 7 at another, and 4 at another. Hmm. So, yeah. It's so it is it is something to worry about and then you got to mark it so What I did on this one Is where I got the good run out. I put a little mark there on that on that one And I put a mark on this rivet right here. So what I would do when I assemble this clutch I lined that mark and that mark up and this gave me the best run out on this clutch now I have to do that to this clutch yet. So we will do that and I didn't video me doing this, but I will video it doing this one. Yeah. And we will see how close we can get the run out on this one. We have six tries to try and get it the best as we can. Yeah. And, we and that'll be coming up in our next video when we start putting this thing back together. But that and we got to put rubbers inside of this yet. Yeah, I got all a, new rubbers. That'll be coming up too in the next video too. So probably. anyway, that's that's what's going to be next. And after we get the run out right, get it marked, then we'll put these together and tighten it up and boot, and we'll probably just put it together like this and run it because this clutch that's in here is good and um, there's nothing wrong with it. I'll pull these papers out. And yeah, we can't leave them in. <laughs> we'll, call, we'll call this good. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, okay, well, yeah, let's move on to uh, getting that bike ready to get put back together. We're working on bending the tabs back right now on this uh, shock absorber cush drive assembly here. And we're going to pull these apart and just check it out. Oh, these are bigger. Here we go.
You miss that one? Yeah, let's come back to that. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I was just like stuck with crap. I don't know. Hopefully, I ain't like the the rubbery stuff on the inside. That's well. These are known for going bad, and they say that they go bad somewhere around fifteen thousand miles. Well, this bike has twelve on it, so it's like you know what? I think it's. I'm not He's gonna. I don't plan on going in here in 2,000, 3,000 miles. So, yeah, now's the time to check it yeah. and then decide then. Yeah. Unless somebody's already did it because this have, you know, this has had some uh, clutch work done to it, so. Well, what I've seen, this doesn't, want to pop right out of there. No. Nope. Sure we in it. Okay. We're going to have to lay something here and then you tap here and knock this center. The center spat. This moves on this. Like this. Okay. This is called the spider and you'll see why inside. Oh, yeah, it's moving. Oh, yeah. It mo Ooh. That's some oil in there, didn't it? Now, they say that these, they call these veins right here. And they say that these have a tenant, they, that when they made these, they made these about 20 thousandths or 30 thousandths too short. And so they pinch and they eat up the rubbers. But I don't know if that's true or not yet on this one. But there is some, the corners, see, get ate off. See that corner is missing? See it? Oh, yeah. So most likely it's true. It almost looks like it might yeah. be easier to put together than the tiger one. See that? That's eating them up. There's a chunk missing off of, from somewhere. All right, well. We're going to replace them. Yeah. This one's probably. all chunked out. Look at there. Yep, there we go. We'll just, yeah, we'll wow. put a new one in. look at this one. Well, that's <laughs> a chunk missing out of that one for sure. This one. They're just... Some of them are really ate up bad. Some of them are. Some of these are rebounds, and some of them are the are the, uh, you know, the rebound ones aren't going to be ate up, but the drive side ones are going to be. This one got transfer from the other side. This piece here is extra. You can see it. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Well, that's something else we're going to work on now too. So. Yeah, we got to get new rubbers. All right. So after all that, with with the clutch and stuff, we're back over at the bike. We're gonna do some stuff over here. But after it's been sitting here a while, we've noticed that there's like a little spot down here that was developing oil. So then we messed around, checked the the oil tank. So we removed the oil tank. Found out that the oil tank's leaking, and this is kind of common with tridents i believe we were talking or you were saying it was anyways what happens is in the back side of this oil pan there's these brackets that are welded on and well, they got and they got this bracket bolted like this so that one and holds the coil thing yeah the coil thing right there yeah but oil was running out through here so this bracket is 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 cracked on the tank and this happens a lot, actually. But what we're going to do is we're going to clean this up and weld, re weld it. And then these, repaint these it. break off, these crack, these crack. 
So um, if you have an oil leak somewhere, just make sure you check your oil tank. This one's already cracked off at one time. And oh, yeah, they repaired was welded. it. Someone repaired it. And so, yeah, and it, it just happens. And uh, so, yeah, so we're going to. So we got to sit down here right now, kind of draining so we can. Yeah, I washed it out real good. Get out all the yeah. tar. Yeah, that's what I was looking at there. It's like it's just really thick sludge tar. It needed to be cleaned out. Clean, it's really clean anyway. inside now. Uh, I was just letting it drain. Yeah. Just wanted to talk about that. Now we'll go over to the other side and start putting some stuff together here. I think. Here we got the the bracket here welded a little bit better than it was. We think um, from where it was leaking at, we believe, and well, we won't find out if it's leaking more until we get oil in it and stuff. But we think we uh, filled in where we thought the crack was at that we saw. So, anyways, then we just touched up with paint and stuff, and this will all be hidden behind there. But that won't leak, hopefully. So <laughs> we'll find out when we get there, I guess. You can see that. So here we go. We got we removed the, the original uh, sprocket. We decided we wanted to put a different one on, but then we, we took it off. We noticed that it isn't really as bad as we thought it was. But um, anyway, what we're going to... It's a little war. They are turnt just a little bit, but not bad. So a little while ago, we were trying a, an O-ring chain in here. And to be able to run an O-ring chain in a trident, um, the clearance here... Yep. Isn't so much the clearance problem isn't so much the case pieces. There's um you're explaining the there is the piece a, in the back. Oh well, we gotta replace this seal. This it rubs there. So the thicker chain will rub there unless you put a different sprocket on. And and this one is just a little tall, see it's it's taller. Because it's 19 tooths. It's one tooth bigger, but it's it's bigger. <laughs> so the chain sits out further. So, and it clears that, yeah. those screws. Yeah. So we're going to work on replacing the seal, of course, and then getting uh, and the sprocket it, on, tighten yeah. that all up, and then we can actually put that cover on because we'll be done here in a way. Because yeah. the next step will be putting the clutch and stuff in. So right. um, I think uh, this will probably end this segment because... That was the takedown and the overall look of the, all the parts. And now the next, the next video, we'll be talking about putting it back together. We'll be fixing uh, the cush drive and and putting all this in. And going through the clutch. And going through the clutch. Yep. yep. So we'll see you again soon. I hope you enjoyed everything here.